far as the trailer behind it goes. So let's give it a try and see what it looks like. It might be okay where it's at, but I can't have it tapping the trailer in the wind. Also remember from prior episode we had talked about making sure that when the box is finally set that it has to clear the doors. Well now we're in that final setting. So let's look at the doors. I'm just using this T-square from my drafting table and that's set at uh, 19 inches. Let's go over here. This side needs to come out uh, one inch. I decided to put some nice uh, finish panel on the bread box. I know it's white and white matches my trim, but I went and actually got the, the real trim uh, to go around the bread box to add that nice uh, matching look. So I'm cutting the trim right now, and in order to add a little stability to the thing, I need to clamp it down to my sawhorse as well. This proved to be a little bit difficult because you can't get the clamp around there. So I stuck it through one of the holes and um, clamped it like that. And it's clamped right to the top of the sawhorse. So that was the solution to that problem. Here's the lattice work, uh, loosely fit, just to see how it looks, and I like it. It makes the bread box water heater integral with the rest of the design around the house. Um, however, on this side, uh, you remember that relief valve pipe that we installed? Um, it's not fitting through the holes exactly, so I'm going to either have to measure and drill a hole, which I'm not real good at, but I think I maybe challenge myself and give it a try, or take the pipe out, redope it, put it back in, which is okay too, but I think I'm going to try the measuring because uh, I just need the challenge. <laughs> okay, this is the east side of the bread box. It's uh, the screws are in and the finish is on. Um, that pipe going out, it looks too long, so I'm going to have to check on uh, the safety of it and then see if I can trim it down a little bit because that's a hazard just poking out like that. Top of your um, bread box, what was used to be the top of the double wide fridge, is real easy to find places to uh, find screw holes for your your lattice work if this is decided if this is what you decide to do. A hover on the underside of the fridge it's a whole different story because you just have two frames where the wheels used to sit and then it's hollow and then where your crisper drawers were inside it curves up and in and there's nothing to screw on there and this down this cross piece back here that keeps it stable this way that I kept on there I couldn't even get my screw into it so or my drill bit so you have to be a little creative on where you find your screw holes on the underside of your fridge uh, you gotta hit the frame where it gives you a frame to hit and now I've got to get in and uh, get the keyhole saw and drill holes to so I can bring through my piping for the hot and the cold. I don't want my uh, pipes running out to interfere with my access to the water closet. Uh, like for example, sometime down the line when I get my conventional water heater hooked up with the bread box. But at the same time, since I use those shark bites, I can disassemble uh, the piping, turn the water off and disassemble the piping to get them out of the way. But I really would rather just leave them as they are, so I think we'll go with that three and have them come into the side of the box. Well, Lord knows that bottom in there is not going to be a problem. It's already gone. I can probably come up anywhere in through there. And it'll be replumbed when the conventional comes in to go into the uh, conventional hot water heater. So 
as far as the insides go, that, that'll be changed anyway. Um, I didn't mention before I put the, the decorative panel on here, since the underside of the fridge was uh, a dark gray, I went ahead and spray painted it with, uh, with a metal outdoor paint so that it wouldn't be that dark coming through so it matched the top a little bit more. It's a small point, but it's, I think it looks a little better. Boy, am I glad I marked the patio right there where the bread box is supposed to be. Because in all that moving around with the paneling and everything, it did move all. I came up with a length of 18 inches coming out of the bread box for the hot and cold lines. And I did it like this. One, I rang the measuring tape in and hooked it on the shark bite and came out this way to the exterior. So I had that line there. I held that steady. And then I took a measure of where the floor joist was because I can't come up through the floor joist. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. When I can come up beside, this whole floor is gone in here, so. I just took where my cold water pipe is coming in I measured it from the wall so it was the same out through, marked it on the outside with a, a, a pencil, and came out and then hit my cross uh, width of the measuring tape that I had coming out of the box, and it came to 18. I haven't used one of these cutters in a long time. Let's see if I remember how. <laughs> now you just pinch down on the you want to cut, squeeze it tight, then you make a loop around, and then you squeeze it tight again and make another loop around, squeeze it tight again, make another loop around, whoops, and then the handle comes off. <laughs> well, let's see if we can get this fixed. Okay, I couldn't get the knob back on, but I did find a smaller vice grip. So I tightened it up and then you go around again. Maybe. There we go. Tighten it up again. Open. We can loosen it now. Ah, there we go. Looks like we have rough on the end, so we're going to have to file that down. But first piece cut. I'm going to put the try to see if that'll fit in the our shark bite here. It's supposed to just pop it in like that. That's supposed to be it. Yeah, it's not coming out. I can't, it won't move out for me. So that looks like that's installed. One more piece like that for the hot. And then we'll come out here and we'll do the elbow to go into the hot water box. Hot water closet. Good morning and happy turkey day. Got started here on the project. Today we're going to be putting these elbows onto the copper pipes that uh, I installed yesterday. Okay, we're going to try the cold water first. Yesterday there was a little bit of problem with trying to get this, uh, I think it was this one on. I may have to file it down a little more. So it's push and turn. And oh, there you go, it went right in. But this is nice because it, you can pivot it a little bit to get it angled the way you want. 